photo electron spectroscopy if we go back into the history of xps x rays photo electron spectroscopy we see that the einstein gave his idea of photoelectric effect in which we see that when a photon of particular wavelength incident on a surface it ejects electron this idea was used by the sigman in 1960 he gave his characterization technique which name was xps and he was also awarded a nobel prize for this in 1981 dr sigman was awarded the nobel prize in physics for the development of xps technique so this was the basic history of xps after this question arises why we study xps or x ray photo electron spectroscopy we use this technique to study elemental composition analysis when we take a nanoparticle or a macro particle if we want to analyze its composition then we take this characterization technique which name is x ray photo electron spectroscopy to find the types of element present on the surface of material it can detect elements from hydrogen to uranium this means that those elements which are present in periodic table you can find the composition analysis of those elements from hydrogen whose atomic number is 1 to uranium in second step we can find chemical state analysis in this analysis xps can distinguish between different chemical states like chemical bonding and oxidation state in third step we see depth profiling in this step we find provide it provides the information about the composition of surface layer if we see in a diagram here we can see that different layers are present and deep view is given by the x ray photo electron spectroscopy all this diagram will be explained further in this video the next reason to use x ray photo electron spectroscopy is quantitative analysis xps can quantitatively determine the concentration of element allowing the researchers to precisely measure the composition of sample so quantitative analysis is very important which we further use in this video the next reason to use xps is surface sensitivity in this sensitivity step we find the how how much time electron takes to move from lower orbit energy shell to higher orbit so as we know when electron gain energy they go to higher level in same sense different elements have different electron energy with respect to time some goes earlier and some goes after a time so all these thing we study in this lecture deeply with diagram further reason is non destructive so xps does not damage the sample making it suitable for analyzing valuable material this is very important step in xps characterization technique that this technique does not damage the sample it does it only gives us the value without damaging the layer of sample next we use this xps because of chemical analysis of complex material if we have a complex material for chemical analysis we use this techniques so xps can be used to analyze a wide range of materials including metals ceramics polymers semiconductors and organic compound that's why this technique is very useful now we see definition of xps or x ray photo electron spectroscopy so xps is defined as surface sensitive analytical technique used to determine the elemental composition and chemical state of a material so these are the basic constituent which we use in xps one is the elemental composition and second one is the chemical state in xps we also call this xps electron spectroscopy so this is the second name of x ray photo electron spectroscopy so electron spectroscopy is also xps for chemical analysis and its abbreviation is named as esca electron spectroscopy chemical analysis so sometimes this term is used in abbreviation sometimes it called as electron spectroscopy and sometimes it called as xps so you have to remember all these names here now we will study the basic principle of xps in start as i early explained that xps is a characterization technique and in this technique 
we use the photoelectric effect and in photoelectric effect when an x-ray photon strikes an atom in the sample it can transfer its energy to one of the atom's electron which eject electron from the atom and this process is known as photoelectric effect as you can see in diagram when a photon of particular wavelength incident on a surface it ejects electron because electron absorb that energy and that energy is given by the x rays and you also know that x rays are the electromagnetic rays which have short wavelength and high energy this high energy is absorbed by the electron from a metal surface or a atom or a sample surface that's why it ejects electron that's why electrons are ejected from the atom and this process is known as photoelectric effect second principle which is further in explanation of photoelectric effect that emission of photoelectron what are these photoelectrons when electrons absorb energy which was given by the x rays these electron those electron who absorb that energy that's known as photoelectrons the ejected electron is now in a higher energy state and is referred to a photoelectron in third format we do energy analysis the emitted photoelectrons are then collected and analyzed in turn of their kinetic energy and in last we form a spectrum from energy analysis because energy analysis tells us about the electrons energy and by using this energy value we draw a spectrum the resulting data is presented as a xps spectrum which is plotted of the number of emitted photoelectrons or peak value corresponds to the specific element and chemical state of sample now we will see the working of xps here we will see how x ray photoelectrons works as we know that x ray as are the highly energetic rays when incident on a sample surface electron absorb energy and move to the upper orbit so working is simple by measuring the kinetic energies of these emitted photoelectrons xps provides information about it so element so the element which are present there it gives us gives us about the information and further it gives the chemical state information and in last it tells us about the relative concentration on the surface of the material so in last monochromatic x rays are only used because they are highly energy penetrate penetratable the sample surface and the interact with the atoms in the top atomic layer before understanding the working of xps we have to study about the role of core electron in xps here you can see this diagram an electron is present at outermost shell this is known as valence electron and they, here these two electrons are known as core electron this outermost electron is also known as fermi electron because it is present in outermost shell and we also know that electron have force of attraction with nucleus even electron is present in outermost shell we also know that when this electron absorb energy it move outward so it depends upon the binding energy Ele electron binding energy is calculated with respect to the fermi level because when this electron absorb energy it move outward and this level is also known as fermi level which is the outermost shell of an electron in further fermi level is the highest energy level occupied by the electron in neutral solid at absolute zero temperature the core electrons are local close to the nucleus and have binding energies characteristic of their particular element in further if we see binding energy if we see this diagram when an electron absorb energy it move outward and when an electron is present its outermost shell it has very weak force of attraction with respect to the nucleus in first orbit electrons which are present they have very high force of attraction with respect to the nucleus so binding energy is the gap between the outermost shell and the valence shell valence electron and core electron these electrons are attracted to the proton with certain binding energy x 
means x means any energy which is by which these electrons are attracted so the binding energy is characteristic of the core electrons for each element and in second the binding energy is determined by the attraction of electron to nucleus and in last if an electron with energy x is pulled away from the nucleus the attraction between the electron and the nucleus decreases and the binding energy also decreases there is an important fact which will be discussed here about x rays the fact is that when the x ray incident on the core of the electron that electron respond very well to the x rays energy here you can see this is the free electron which will be the place here because there is a vacancy of electron here so in first orbit we take two electron and core electrons are two electrons and this is the valence shell where four electrons are represented are placed here so when x rays incident on core of the electron this free electron will place here this will only happen when x ray is incident that's why the core electron respond very well to the x ray energy